Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to Jeff TV. I am Jaleb and this is Football Manager 2022, the Youth Academy Chance with Bill and Ma. We are looking at Avero Leo and I'm just going to say this here now. This guy is getting better already. He's grown an inch and his jumping reach is up by one. So I'm going to start to keep hold of him, especially now that he signed his deal and he will be with us until his contract becomes professional and a team activates his minimum release clause so we've got one full season with him at the club and we've got to make the absolute most of it next year and try and get promoted with this guy in our team because if we don't we're probably gonna lose him and that's not ideal we've actually had a few games since we last met and this guy came to our team he's played three times he's been set off once if right though let's go with the matches we've had since we last met the first game we had was away from home against better ends and this is one of the best teams in the division right now and are looking to be promoted this year as champions. They take the lead inside 10 minutes. And unfortunately for us, they double the lead. In the 84th minute of the game, we were trying to get an equalizer. Not that I was really trying to attack or anything, but Bernard still scores again. Second goal of the game, 2-0, easy win. And I don't think they 100% deserve the win, that they actually would say otherwise. I still think we could have done more here. It was just unfortunate we were not at our best and we weren't 100% brilliant. So something to think on for the future. The next match we had was against Portland and we went behind inside 7 minutes after they scored this penalty but we did equalise 2 minutes into the second half after Jafin Ho finds Ivarez, Ivarez plays in the board in the middle and Luis Santos scores his 5th of the season or something like that. We then get a penalty ourselves and Sandoval scores it, he's not missing that. And then 4 minutes later, 5 minutes later he scores again. We're finding our feet with this formation and Sandoval scoring his second of the game is showing that yes, this formation works. And we ended the game with nine men. Why? Well, Leo got himself sent off in his debut, 57 minutes in due to the second yellow card. And then Jolinho and Agudian managed to get himself injured. So we were literally playing without a right back for a part of the game at the end. And then Podmanens had a load of chances and didn't take them. We still had an next year of 3.2. They had an next year of 2.5. So it makes you wonder how no they missed so many chances, doesn't it? The next game we had was against Gondomar and inside 12 minutes we went behind after we took a corner and I realised my set pieces were not set up properly. So defensively, we made a mistake. We do actually equalise though, thankfully for us, and Ivarez finds Sandoval, he finds Luis Santos, he finds Antunes. Who does that? Cuba should do better, but it's still a good equaliser nonetheless. Unfortunately for us, 85 minutes in, we can see the winning goal. Torre... Finds the ball, plays in the middle, and Palambi scores. Gonna be honest, kind of wish we didn't concede it, but they probably did deserve the game and the win. And really, it was our own fault. We let ourselves down, and we should have done better on the day. So, a 2-1 victory for Gondomar. The next game we had was actually at home against Chavez, and we took the lead inside 70 minutes after, got, after Sandoval scores the opening goal. So, a good finish there, 1-0. We then make it 2, and Tunis with the free kick, a very good finish from him, so 47 minutes it's 2-0. We then, however, get the ball away nearly, and Rodriguez making his debut for us. Get the ball away, and Cavadas does that. Really good finish. So we're holding on for the next 21 minutes, and we still win. We've been Chavez, a team that is trying to fight for the title. And was it convincing? Not really. Did we deserve the win? Maybe not. But we still got the win regardless. And that's the important part here. The last game we had was Espinho and inside 47 minutes we took the lead after Quintiniero has an open goal to aim at. Really nice to see him get his first of a goal for us. And in the 70th minute of the game we make it two. It took us a bit longer than I wanted to get the second goal bar to give away. And Tunis with another long wage effort scores to make it 2-0. And it was enough to get us a 2-0 win and to relegate Espinho. So we are comfortably a mid-table team, even top half team at this point. It was nice to see that we actually have a decent team now. So the formation works, it's not perfect by any means, but we have secured a top half finish because Lunda Tenno have lost four points this year and we're definitely doing better than last year. Already three points further ahead than last year. We've got a six point gap over 11th place, so we're already in a much better position than last year. If we can translate some of those defeats into draws and victories, we might be further at the table. We're 17 points away from the top three. But the top three already secure in the top three positions. It's just a matter of who goes up. So we could be looking at a scenario where both Benenens teams get promoted in the same season. Chavez needs to avoid losing to Benenens to get themselves up there. The other Benenens, the SAD version, need to beat 
Estrella, the Emadoya, to have a chance of winning the title. Estrella and Emadoya need to do something and to better Muffa's results in order to survive. Academico de Vazel are the team that Muffa taking on, so anything's possible. Still with Tekken and Aruka today, who are in sixth. They're looking to try and hold on to sixth place after Portman Ends could be taking their spot if they beat Let's Do this. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think we're going to beat them, but it'd be nice to try. We could still finish as high at eighth because Olivia Ends take a load of Tana today. So a good game that we could potentially take advantage of. If we win, we get the 49 points. I think that ties for what we did before. I don't think we've ever got out of the 50 points tally. So I'm going to check that very, very quickly for us. Yeah, we've got 49 points, we've got 7th place before, so we can match the points tally if we win today. And that would be nice. A top half finish of the first one in 4 years. That's a promising sign, to say the least. Either way though, we're going to take our opponents. I'm going to try and make sure we win today. So our lineup is going to be this. Senna Pereira starts in goal. He's been improving and we now can see the improvements arrows going up and down. Samuel Goodian is the right back for today. Although Leo is the full playing defender today. Starting on the right. Mauricio Barreto stars as the centre back on the left, even though he's not very strong with his left foot. Jafino will start as the left back, despite the fact he's much better as a right back. Fernando Ivarez starts as the Mazzala on support. He could break Brian's record of most assists in this league campaign this season if he gets an assist today. He starts the Mazzala on attack. Luis Santos actually starts as a deep line playmaker on support. It's not his best role. I'm playing in there regardless. Will Pope is playing as Mazzala on support. And I think he can do a good job there. Odor Antunes starts as the attacking midfield on support. I've changed the role from Shadow Striker to attacking midfield on support. Because I think he does better for everyone involved. Sandoval starts as the deep line forward on support. He's been getting a lot of goals with it. And I don't know why. But the last person we're playing is Rui Contineiro. He has scored a goal. He's got his first ever goal. I think he can improve and do better and better still, so I've got a lot of faith in him. I really do. Either way, let's go on and take our points on today and hope we can get all three points in our last game of the year. Let's get going. Here's Antonius now. Sandoval. Oh, he's got past his man. Well done. He still keep going. He has gone for goal. It's wide. Fino with the throw could do something. I actually changed my set piece a little bit as well. For the first time, I really tried to tinker with him. I don't know. I think I got them right, but I don't know. Could be wrong as well. Is Sandoval Contineiro. Ooh, good chance. What I'm finding is we're better going forward now, and it's nice. We've got a free kick. Antonis has scored one already from that sort of range, and that's a chance. And the SC denies. Here's Leo. He's been booked again. He got booked before and then got sent for a second booking. So I'm a little concerned he's going to do it again. Here's Luis Santos now. Sandoval. Julian. Ivarez. Julian. He can do some damage here with a cross or two. Oh, what a cross that is. And Fernando Ayres with the finish. I said he could do some damage. I didn't expect that kind of cross and that kind of finish. 1-0. I'll tell you who now. Fernando Ayres has been one of my best players I've ever produced. At least in terms of what he's able to do and the way he's developed. It's really good to see him score. Roberto Santos. Oh, not the best ball in the world hit, was it? But here is Sarah on the ball. And Gru Fernandez goes for goal. It's hit the bar. Okay. I've got to say this here now. If we can perform the way we've been doing since we made some tinkers to this tactic, we might be able to change for top half or even promotion next year. We literally feel like a much better team now. We've made some of these changes. And it's wonderful to say the least. We've been some big teams too. Okay, so maybe we're not being as great as I want to admit. As Leo is on the ball, rushes forward. And finds Sandoval. Ball forward to Gurdian. And this could be a chance. There's no one really there. But he's got another chance to do something here. There's an Alvarez. The Naiva to keep us somehow. Yes, see, okay. Plays the ball forward. And Beretta did not jump for that. But he should have potentially done so. Here's Fernandez. This could be a chance for Aruka to get an equalizer here. They have a chance. It's gone over. And this could be a counter tap for Aruka here. Not ideal for our point of view. But Jafino gets the ball back. Here's Correa. A player that's come off the bench as well. And... Here we go now. Silva with a chance for his first of a goal. Denied by the goalkeeper. Ricardo Santos, while not amazing at times, has got a really good ball on him. We are looking very good here. Let's see. Silva and Santos hit Correa. Antonis denied. And this could be a chance still. Back. Oh, yeah. Antonis will go for goal. A bit lucky. But we'll take it. It's 2 0. It's game over now. So. I've got a lot of faith and a lot of confidence in my team now that I've seen this again. And 
we suddenly feel like a team that can challenge for not just top half, but maybe promotion as well, if we put the run of form together quite nicely. We won four of our last five matches in the league, and that's ridiculous. And given that Java's just lost, and both the Belenense teams just got promoted, and Australia just gone into the relegation playoffs, that's interesting. And we've beaten Jarvis, we've beaten Aruka, we've beaten Portimonense. We know how to win against some big teams in this division now. And I think going into next season, top half has got to be the aim. And maybe, just maybe, try and get towards the promotion places. Because we're going to have just one season with Leo and it's going to take a while. But I think we might be able to keep hold of him if we get promoted. Who knows? So the end of the season review has arrived and... Bessie's falling because we've done quite well this year. As expected, no transfers have been made by us, though we did give it a few players. Lucas Pinto we sold to Lunatano. He only played twice from the bench. Ribiero we sold as well, released him effectively. And we also let Mugai go out as well. Has he got a new club yet? No, it does not look like he does. Loans out, we made quite a few of them. Lewis Breda is going to be sold at the end of the season, going to be let go at the end of the season regardless. And Tiago Pratas, oh god, I've just re realised Pratas plays as a... This is going to be awkward. He can play as a technical midfielder, so we could use him next year. And that's saying a lot. He's wanted, though, by Paredes. We've got some other players as well that have been out on loan, like Quintero, who's been doing decently, Bournes, Grenda, Rieros, and Borges all gone out on loan. It's only three of them really did poorly, I have to say. So we finished in ninth place, avoided the relegation battle, and the fact we've only managed to get only a second top half finish in our seventh season in this division is an interesting problem, but given how we finished the season compared to how we started it, I like to think that we found our problems and we found a way to change our season's momentum. I like to think we can do that now. If we can maybe change the way the feeds we're having towards the end of the season to victories, we'd be looking much better indeed. I think the players that we got in the latest intake have actually helped us out in the long run. We were knocked out in the third round of the Tata Tapurega by Victoria Citadel, who are going to get promoted next year, so we will be able to get revenge on them next season, I like to think. And the Cup, we got through the third phase for the very first time. We took on Fimilacau and Benfica and lost to both of them. No surprise really, but it's good to get there in the first place. Biggest win was only a 3-1 victory against Marfa, would you believe? So, that's an interesting one. The match I remember was a 2-1 victory against Letsuris, where we Sandoval got two goals, even if we considered the goal late on. It was honestly our best match in terms of sheer quality, and that was before I changed the formation as well. So, if that's our best match, then that's saying a lot. The goal by Luis Santos in this match against Ferenz was the goal of the season. It's just a shame that we threw away a two-goal lead and then not losing 3-2, because... I wish we'd actually done better here. I really do. Finances. Sponsorship got up by seven grand only. We lost about 30 grand in broadcast revenue. We did gain a bit more money in the corporate hospitality. We also gained 50,000 more in the competition prize money as well. And we gained about 60,000 more in the matchday commercial retail. We did make 255,000 in merchandise sales. Only 25,590 of that was non-domestic. We sold 3,256 shirts. Sandoval, Olivienz, Atunis, Correa, and Ankende being the top shirt sellers. How we lineup was this initially, though we did change it partway through the season. And if you look at the players in this lineup, the fact that Paredes is in it instead of Tifino is kind of telling and um, almost a bit damning, really. Still, we've got a good season under our belt with Pereira, Gurien, Beretta, Manatre, Paredes, Luis Santos, Ivarez, Correa, Akende, Aparicio, and Sandoval all getting into the team of the season. And Aparicio actually got injured towards the end of the season, so he would have played otherwise. Dracula, Sandoval again is the player of the season. And we got Luis Santos being the young player of the season and got the goal of the season as well. Most assists by Alvarez with 10. Most goals by Sandoval, 14. He got the most player of the match with 8 as well. And Luis Santos got the highest average rating of 7.3. And he played the most passes per 90 minutes with 126. Alvarez got the most assists by a single player, equaling the record by Brian with 10. Sandoval has got the most player of the match awards with 8. And can see his ever-lasting record of most league appearances by a player of 308, as well as the most league goals by a player of 113. When we lose him, he'll be sorely missed. So yes, we're looking good now. This is the overall best 11. Loreo is in goal. Brian is the left-back. Casanova and Beretta, the two centre-backs. Luis Breda is now the right-back, with Moisa Jr. being the DM. Ivarez and Correa, the both of the centre-field. Akende and Oxford are the wingers, while Sandoval is the striker. 
board budget is this we got 38 and a half grand in wages and 138,000 in transfers goodness gracious alive and the board wants us to finish any relegation playoffs only okay we can work with that and then establish ourselves as a team next year as well do not sign players over the age of 30 develop players using the youth system play position football play a high table pressing football and make the most of set pieces that's working we can do that so we're going to tell the players that we are going to be trying to avoid relegation even if it might be for the relegation playoffs they're happy with that thank you very much and i won't say anything else he wants okay he wants something i don't know why he wants something for me now either way good to see that the team love us now and Aparicio has literally just returned from his injury. That's good to say the least. He was out for four weeks due to a twisted ankle. He's developing quite nicely, actually. And I like to think he could be a mainstay in the attacking midfielder position going forward, especially when he's only 17 and has the potential to maybe, just maybe, potentially be a player in the top flight next year. I really do. Either way, though, we're going to go forward and we're going to see who's been promoted and relegated from the other division. So I'll be right back. So the end of the season has happened. Chavez did not get promoted off. They went down to 10 men inside 56 minutes when they're 1-0 down to lose 2-0 and to lose over the two legs. Unfortunately for their point of view, Estrada de Amadoria managed to only just get past Amor after Dib gets a 102nd minute winning goal in extra time. So, the two teams going up are the two Benanens teams. Braga B and Espinho are the two teams that have gone down. The two teams that are coming down to our division are Estabel, Priya and Nacional. Fun fact, I actually looked at this. Tom Della got a tycoon takeover the year before they got relegated to our division. And I was not expecting it. So, yeah, tycoon in 2029. Two years ago, they've been improving their facilities ever since. And they've been trying to make sure they are one of the best teams in the country. They haven't got there yet, but they were good enough, apparently on paper, to finish in the top half of the table. Fifth place to be exact, so something's gone horribly wrong for them to be stuck in a very lowly 15th place. Fun story though, the two teams that will be going up to face us next year are Fave who won the division as well as Victoria de Sotobel and Victoria de Sotobel proving themselves to be an absolute force of nature this year. I don't believe they've actually been out of this division since they're promoted to it in 21. So they've been stuck in the third tier for a very long time now. And they'd be, no doubt, grateful that they're finally in the second tier in the fell in debt by 1.7 million. Slightly awkward, that. I decided to look at my finance before we end the season. And we actually just got our sponsorship money coming in. We got £602,942 on sponsorship income, which means we're now 1 million in the red. We're not insecure we're not secure but we're okay and that's all that really matters i think at this point in time so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to end this video here i hope that you guys have enjoyed yourselves i hope that you guys will like and share this video and that you subscribe to the channel it really does help me out a lot where do you think we're going to fish next year because despite everything we are still predicted to fish in 16 plays in that chart so the board thinks we're only going to be able to say we are good enough for a relegation playoff position. I'd like to think we could avoid it, but that's just me. Either way, though, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.